Greetings QCS Bill fans, and welcome to an episode of What Happens When You Order an X-Ray for Your Medical Office and Don't Plan for the IT Infrastructure. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, long story short, client that we just got doing the uh, full office build for, and Hopefully that video is already up and published by the time this video gets published. Uh, that we did the last server, the, la the Naples server on a budget basically, um, with uh, some desktops and everything, and that was the full office. So this is the this is part two basically of this whole escapade. Um, so that office is done at this point when this gets published um, and then now the X the x-ray machine that is at that was at the original office that is getting moved to the new office is being replaced by a 3d x-ray so which is uber cool but which is uber kind of a pain in the butt because this thing takes pictures that are almost half a gigabyte in size. So their poor old little server, Windows Server 2012 R2 Power Edge Dell machine, which is an utter piece of hot garbage that I can't stand to no end. Yes, Dell, I hate you. You suck. You make shit. There it is. <sighs> but I regret. So, anyways, um, yeah, we finally get to replace that thing. So, about six months ahead of schedule, which uh, doesn't fit into my timeline very well, but and doesn't fit into their budget very well, but at the same time, this is kind of like, well, this is the bullet you have to swallow because you swallowed the other two. So, yeah. <laughs> because it's cheap, it was... It made more sense to build a new server with new storage and everything else than it would be to um, tr even try to upgrade the the backup or do a half thing and then do the other part later and then have to do all of this basically twice uh, minus the hardware but all the setup and all the you know, file, moving the files and everything and all that stuff. So it's just like, nope, mm, just easier to do it all in one shot and call it done. So this is what we're doing. All right, so, so there's four machines that have to go into this system. So currently the PowerEdge server that they're using now, they also use it as a workstation. Uh, so they're double use casing it. The, the because so because that 2012 R2 R uh, 2012 R2 server is not virtualized in any way shape or form. Uh, that's why they're doing it that way. The problem is is this new server, like all the other servers that we've done, is going to be fully virtualized, and not only is it going to run the Hyper V. The controller and our database server but it's also going to run our x-ray storage server so it's actually going to run three instances of um, three virtual instances of server and it's going to run one hyper-v on it and that's going to be one of the videos following up to that one or following up to this and yeah that thing's going to be a monster so, uh, stay tuned for that one because, yeah, that thing's going to be cool. So, anyways, so this is the other stuff that we have to do this. So, because we're getting rid of the terminal, that's where the 4300U comes in. So, this guy's all pretty pre route set up and ready to go. Um, go back, watch our previous 4300U uh, ASRock Industrial 4x4 box uh, build. Um, and it's the same thing. So, yeah, so go back and watch that video, and that's what this guy is. This is gonna replace the terminal in the back. Um, so they actually have a regular PC back there now, and we're just gonna wall mount this on the same backboard that the server and everything's going on, and we're gonna reuse 
the monitor that they're currently using that's well mounted back there to run this guy. So, good deal. Alright, so, we need to make this guy go away so we can talk about these guys. You're going, alright, so we've got a fractal node case over here, and we have Cooler Master, Master Box, and our NR200. So these are both going to be ITX machines. Now, the reason why we're doing ITX is we were kind of limited in space uh, for where these two are going to go. So we're going to do, um, so that's why we're doing ITX. So this guy, you're probably going, why do you see how two big monster server drives down there? Okay, so this guy is the backup for the server and the site. So that's the reason for this guy. Okay, so this guy, now this is gonna be the new um, uh, 3D X-ray workstation. So this will be the machine that they can actually take the X-rays, pull them up, and actually load them on the software and actually view them, and then see what they have to work with. Um, so now, granted, we, I got the specs for this, um, the recommended specifications for this, and the data sheet for it was four years old. <laughs> Actually, no, it was five years old because it still had, it didn't even have to, uh, server 2019 listed on it. It had server 2016 listed on it. Um, so yeah, it was like, how old is this data sheet? Even though, and all they did is take the cover and they put 2021 specifications, but they didn't change anything for the specifications. <laughs> it's like, okay, great. So this is gonna be a little overkill, but in the world of medicine, it's always better to go overkill and fast than it is to go budget and slow. So, because basically we have the budget, we're gonna go, we're gonna go fast. We're just gonna, strap it on and go. So we've got our Cooler Master, uh, Master Box, and our 200 uh, ITX case. Um, this is, I think, the same case that Jay, uh, that Jay at Jay's Two Cents uh, built up. Uh, so pretty cool, pretty cool case. Except we're not going to make, you know, put a 3090 in it or anything crazy. But what we are going to do is we're going to get, we've got an ASRock, a520M ITX AC board. So this has the wireless on it, even though we really don't need it. Um, but we can use it as a backup, just in case um, the hard line goes down or something like that. Um, so, but we're gonna run uh, a AMD Ryzen 3900X 12 core 24 thread processor in this, uh, which we're gonna cool with our Dark Rock Slim uh, by Be Quiet uh, Cooler. Uh, and this, now technically this is supposed to be about three millimeters too tall for this case. So now fortunately we do, I don't have the tempered glass version of this, it's the metal version. So the worst case is we're gonna have to uh, modify the the side cover a little bit to get the cooler to fit. I'm hoping we don't have to do that, but we'll find out. Uh, let's see, then we've got our our Samsung Evo uh, Evo Plus because we're running third gen, or not third gen, because we're running Zen 2 uh, Ryzen. We're only at PCI Express 3. We're only at Gen 3 for third gen. PCI Express, and so we, you're going to use a Gen 3 drive. The other trick is, is one, uh, we want we, we want a two terabyte drive uh, because this thing may they may end up saving files to it and stuff like that. So we need capacity. Also, the reason why we we'll go for a big drive like that is um, drive uh, the longer the drive drive will last. From write, constantly writing and rewriting large files to it all the time. So the drive should last longer uh, as well. And then we got uh, 
a, a pair of G-Skill um, rip jaws, uh, DDR4 3200. Yep, 3200 uh, C16. So we got 16 gigs of RAM. Uh, more than enough to be able to pull the everything off there uh, super fast and go with it. And then we've got um, for video card because we needed at least a two gig video card. The original plan for this is we were going to run a 5700G and then do like 32 gigs of RAM. And it was like, well, it barely cuts the mustard when it came to the rendering specifications for the video files. Um, because the video files, or not the video, the picture files for this particular software, it optimized for CUDA. So hence NVIDIA. So hence it was like, eh. That's not really going to work. <laughs> It'll work, but it's not going to work the way I want it to work. So instead, we, I got a Quadro card, and this one is the PNY VCNT600. Um, so it's actually a pretty tiny uh, half-height single-slot card. Uh, runs on uh, slot power, has no extra anything on it, but According to according to the benchmark ratings that the manufacturer of the software used to rate this card is like 10 times more powerful than we actually need uh, being a 4 gig card. So it's like, eh, if that's all we need, that's all we need. Because we can always expand this later on if we have to. And then we got our Cooler Master V750 SFX Gold Power Supply. Um, so the one thing you'll notice is we went gold power supplies on both of these because we don't want to generate a bunch of heat. Um, and so we want to be able to keep it nice and cool. Um, but the other reason why we went small form factor on this was because of the fact that uh, we're actually going to uh, wall mount this case and we're going to wall mount it to the wall underneath the desk. Uh, because. Again, we don't have a lot of room. Uh, what, what I call, what I like to call the doctor den, um, it just doesn't, uh, there's not a lot of room in there. And so, yeah, it's just, it just works better if we have this guy up underneath. Uh, this office right now is pretty much set up with a whole bunch of Dell 19-inch uh, AIOs. And they work fine, but they're old, and eventually they're all going to get replaced with probably these 4300s, uh, just honestly because they worked so much better. <laughs> so, okay, that's it. So, let's get to the bench. Okay, welcome to the bench. So, for part two of this, uh, yeah, extravaganza as it were. So, at this point in filming, we've got the server and everything installed, so Phase one is complete, basically. And so now we gotta get this guy done. So this is gonna be our x-ray um, viewing computer. So, all right, uh, let's get this thing broken down, shall we? Now, one thing I did notice about this case, this is very cool because all the panels are on ball pins like these, and they just capture inside of these. So they just pop right off. That is very cool, Cooler Master. I like that. Especially for like an ITX case where you don't have a lot of room anyways. And so, yeah. Don't eat, don't eat the candy. That's bad. Alright, so there's our I.O. board. There's all that. Okay, so it's like this. And then these guys, it's just, this literally just pops off. So it comes off at an angle, it's got the retainer clip right here. So it's got the retainer clip right there. So that's one side. And that's the other side. And then it gives you full access to the whole thing. And then you can actually... Um, so you take this screw out and then you can take the bottom off and it gives you... and Because basically that is a... Uh, fan tray and 
it gives you access to be able to install your fans easily. So, super slick. So, all right. Um, all right, so let's get. Let's see. Let's do it this way. All right, take this out here. There's our hard drive. One of our hard drive cages right there. And then this is our power supply cage. Which that will probably have to come out. This is our giant box goodies. Gotta have the giant box goodies. Alright, so there's our rear. I would say that's probably like a 90, probably a 93 millimeter fan-ish, something like that. Okay. Lots of twist ties hanging out all, all over the place here. All right, so we're gonna move this out. So I don't have to work around them. There's your ex little power extension cord for your power supply. And we got two screws to take this guy out. Oh, and we're gonna have to undo the straps here. Oh, okay, I get it. Aha. So that goes like that. And that goes like that. And we're just gonna totally remove them for now. Over here. All right, and then we just need to take these two screws out. So we take our hard drive cage out here. cable comes in the top so then okay so everything goes into the bottom here okay so that makes that easy so I can slide out now SFX or SFXL uh, because you can put the like 140 150 millimeter power supply because they do make some really big SFX power supplies you know if you're gonna shove a 3090 in here or something crazy I guess you could. All right, so there's that, there's that. This piece is actually riveted in, so you cannot remove that one. Um, okay. Okay, so, sweetie. All right, we'll get her, let's get our motherboard unpacked and get our IO shield in here. Oh, look at that. Isn't it cute? <laughs> so, our I.O. shield here has the padded, um, like, aluminum foil grounding, um, grounding on it instead of the little tabs. So, these are a little more expensive. Um, but, the nice thing is, is you don't have to, you don't have to fight the the clips or the, the grounding tabs when you're putting your IO shield in. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and slide this guy in here. Now, we're, this is the, all right, so this is the A520M ITC AC. Um, the reason why we're doing A520, one, for budgetary reasons, um, but also two, we don't need Gen 4 on this. Um, Gen 3 is gonna be God's plenty fast. Um, it's got enough VRM on it. We're gonna run a 39, um, 3900X in this. 
um, so it's got enough DRM and everything to be able to handle it. Because the thing is, is for the most part, this chip, it's going to sit at idle. Um, for the workload that we're putting it through, it is not going to work that hard. Okay, let's try our standoffs line up. And, ooh, we have captive standoffs in the back here. That's sweet. And so when you push it in, and your standoffs lock in. Awesome. All right. Okay. Put some screws in here. Oh, I guess we need to get into the mystery box. Okay. So mystery box. We have a case pin. <laughs> like, all right. That's cool. So we have a big old case fan in here. All right. Back to it. That's a whole bunch of standoffs and whatnot. Oh, that's all the fan rubber grommet for the standoffs. Okay, so you get the four coarse threaded uh, longer screws. Uh, these look like M, probably M5s. Not sure where my big long, oh, big long screwdrivers in the house. Use our Game of Nexus Toolkit screwdriver. Eight inch screwdriver. Alright, there's that. Ford is in. Alright, so now. Alright, there's our 3900. DDR4-3200 uh, CL16-1818-38 um, So lately anymore I have gotten really picky about memory and timings and um, yeah so basically I will not put anything in a machine uh, that is not well in a higher end machine I should say that is not um, CL16. Because in a desktop, why the heck are you using CL22? Are you that cheap? <laughs> yes, Dell and HP, I'm talking to you. Oh yeah, penny pinchers. Anyways, all right, um, let's get a cooler on this. Okay, so we are going to use our Dark Rock Slim here. So we're going to use this guy. And this is the first time I've actually installed one of these, so let's see how this goes. Woo! Oh, the box came out. Really, guys? So basically, it looks exactly like the Pro 4, just cut in half, basically. And there's our fan to go on the outside. Then all this here, this should be our mounting bracket for the bottom, and all of our standoff stuff. So. There's our fan clips. Yep. This is all the hardware. 
Mm, I just had a thought. I am totally gonna dirty trick this. We're gonna see what I'm talking about here in a minute. All right, so Intel, AMD. So there's our brackets. Those have to go in first. Screws, standout spacers, and washers. So, okay. book. Oh hey, look at that! They didn't make nine different copies of the manual in different colors or different languages. They just made one. Okay, so... Alright, yep, so we have to put the standoffs on. Um, the standoffs on for the AM4. We have to take the bracket off. So, alright, that's easy enough. <clears throat> okay, and then I am actually going to, so we're going to test this real quick. It goes like this, and that, ooh, that's, yep, that's what I was afraid of, I thought. So, alright, so let's grab our side panel here, and we'll see uh, how much modifying we're going to have to do. That's like kind of what I was afraid of, is that we were going to have to modify the side panel on this. Yep. Yeah. Okay, so... <laughs> yep, yeah, so we're going to have to modify the side panel on this just a little bit. Because it's... See, it's not going to lock. Is the issue. So... Yep. Yeah. Uh, we're going to take some cardboard and a hammer, and we are just going to kind of neatly go in a circle and just kind of press this out just a little bit so watch that later hmm. okay so cool all right we can do that we can do that later here all right so perfect all right so okay all right dirty trick Take the goodie box, which is like the perfect size for this. Take the goodie box, set it underneath the motherboard tray, and then that, and we kind of just crush it a little bit. Kind of mold in there. Cool. And that will hold your um, your AMD retainer in place. So then you can take this all off. And then don't reuse these screws with this particular unit because it comes comes with screws that are the proper length for proper mounting pressure. So, Steve, I got I got one criticism for you. Can you make like one of these that's uh, a Phillips number two, and it's eight inches long, just like a one-off, and sell it separately? It would be awesome if you could do that and make the handle just a hair just a hair bigger. Kind of, kind of more like this old Craftsman one because. I got big hands, and although these are great for doing like delicate stuff, um, and you've got a really good hard shaft on these, um, yeah, if you can make one that's just bigger, great. I'd buy a few of them. <laughs> okay. Uh, oh, so there's a. So we gotta take that heat sink off, so we can get. Our SSD in here. I'm gonna do that, and make life just a little bit easier because this cooler is gonna overhang. If you were using an AMD stock cooler, this would not be a problem at all. But since we're not using an AMD stock cooler, and the old 
only Wraith RGB cooler I have is currently sitting on the mining rig. Yeah, not doing that. Okay, so has the thermal pad with the film on it. Make sure you take the film off, otherwise the the heat sink does you zero good. Two terabyte Evo Evo Plus. Now people are going to be like, why aren't you using a Pro? Because it's not going to be fourth gen, so why use? Why pay the extra money for fourth gen when you're not going to utilize it? Well, that's why. Stick that in there, and that locks down with the heat sink. So, perfect. So, I could tell you from experience, eh, when you go and you stick this on here, when you, if you ever go to take this off, um, be very careful in how you do it because there is no secondary retention on this. When you take the heat sink off, and if this thermal pad is stuck to your SSD, the SSD is going to want to come with it. So you're going to have to kind of come up, you're going to have to tilt it up like this and then slide it off this way to get that guy off of there without damaging your SSD. So just a note for future reference. So, alright, make sure we're fully seated. And. Hold that. Now since I'm doing, I would probably recommend doing this one first, not this one. So, because that's going to hold the back end of your SSD down. Because if you over tighten this one, it's going to want to lift up on the one side. So we're going to put this one in. If I can get the hold line up, it'd be great. Definitely wants to lift up. So you run that one down just barely to see. Tighten this one down. And then tighten this guy down. Remember it's M.2, so don't over tighten your screws. Otherwise, you'll strip them. And then you're really going to have fun. <laughs> okay, and that's it for this one. So like, share, subscribe so you can uh, stay tuned for the next episode in this little uh, build-a-thon kind of thing. So thank you for watching, and we'll catch you on the next one. Bye for now.